Hey everybody, welcome back to Concept Pending, Heroes and Villains podcast. I uh, got Greg with us today, yep. uh, along with AC, Hello. our incredibly talented illustrator. Not to say that Greg's not a talented illustrator himself, but AC is our go-to guy for custom graphics. AC's been with us, what, AC, like we're going on two well, years? Yeah, it all, it all depends if you're counting when when I was doing freelance. So, uh, according to <laughs> according to uh, what's the uh, LinkedIn, a little bit over uh, five years. So okay, yeah. So AC AC's been with us uh, for about two years officially, but we've been working together much longer. AC was, you know, back in the day when it was just a very condensed version of what we have now. I would reach out with, uh, to AC on, you know, special projects if we needed custom graphics done. Uh, if any of you fans out there recall, uh, we had a Sith Jedi collection we launched at San Diego Comic Con. Oh my God. I don't know what year that was, but it was, it was pre pandemic for sure. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. like 17 maybe or 18? I think it was around, yeah, 17 or 16 that we, that we started doing. Yeah. Uh, those illustrations, at least working with them. If you guys recall, it was AC did the, it was like a Darth Maul with the um, Sith Holocron. The Holocron, yeah. yeah. And then there was a Jedi piece that was, oh, it was the exploded uh, lightsaber guts with the the Jedi wings around it. So that was AC and we have AC with us today and we're going to learn more about him. So AC, like I know a little bit about your backstory um, and where you came from and some of the stuff you've done, but uh, not all of it, obviously. So if you uh, if you want to share with us any of your your history, we would appreciate it. Oh, for sure. Um, let me see. Uh, at least <laughs> it all depends on how far you want to take it, but um, uh, I think I, I fell in love with with illustration uh when i was in college i i used to doodle in high school and all that stuff but it wasn't until i got into college that i truly uh, fell in love illustrating and that was in part because i was getting involved in certain projects like scientific illustrations and stuff like that so but yeah i mean um my background i'm self-taught because my bachelor degree is in marine biology and that was my first step Uh, i started doing illustrations then um, some of the professors uh, which I worked with uh, started to uh, expose me to graphic designs uh, software to the point that I was I was getting more work with them in terms of the things that they were doing and uh, for one in particular I helped him to to work on a book uh, it was a a, a sand beach uh, field guy. And then uh, from there on, I just kept on educating myself a little bit more on graphic design and, and, and web design by, back then, that it was pretty much starting up. It was in the 90s. So. Uh, but, uh, man, I've, I've, I've done so, so many things. <laughs> from there, I, I think one of, one of the first uh, jobs that I got after graduating was uh, as a graphic designer for a screen printer and an embroidery. After that, I jumped, uh, because of the lack of work, uh, I just jumped um, as a department manager in Kmart for Photo Lab. So I managed the Photo Lab there. Uh, and I wasn't there that long that because I just started applying for graphic design and, and web design jobs. So uh, I managed to, uh, to get hired by a company in San Juan which is the, the capital of Puerto Rico. From there, every, uh, I mean, I've been working with uh, different agencies, marketing agencies and, and all that stuff after that. So I moved to San Antonio and uh, I think it's a, I was around 2013. He, after moving here, it was that I started to, to do some freelance work for, for Heroes and Villains and, and kept on illustrating. I don't know exactly what area you would like to... No, to, man, that, it's all... It's great. Yeah, I had forgotten that you're a marine biologist, so that's super awesome. I kind of wish I was. <laughs> but but yeah, like that's funny. The Kmart photo lab bit, it's amusing 
to me because somewhere along my journey, I was a uh, Joanne Fabric Frame uh, <laughs> Department Manager, which is oh yeah yeah. <laughs> Which was funny. Uh, it's a fun because you have like your own little space, your right. own little lab or whatever. But yeah, that's cool. Uh, so for everybody that doesn't know, uh, AC is from Puerto Rico, and that's uh, that's where he, you know, kind of began the journey. And like you said, just recently, not. Uh, not terribly too long ago, uh, moved to San Antonio here in Texas, which San Antonio's a good haul from where we are up in the DFW area, but close enough. Um, yeah, like Americans don't have such a problem conceptualizing how far away things can be from one another. I've been seeing a lot of videos lately where they ask Europeans, you know, how long do you think it takes to get from like Dallas to Washington, D.C.? And they'll give some ridiculous answer like three or four hours <laughs> <laughs> by car. Dude, you're lucky yeah. if it takes three or four hours yeah. by plane. Yeah. Come on. Come on down to Texas and we'll, we'll stretch it out. Blow more. your mind. Yeah. So, yeah, AC started doing some freelance for us. But AC, I'm curious because, you know, all that stuff was very like just kind of explained was very much just like the technical side of your your background and your your history. But clearly you're super comic nerd. And, you know, <laughs> like with like tape and everything, like was that was that kind of your drive? And like, what were you doodling when you were uh, in high school? Like, is that so that's the thing in high school? I, you know, fell in love with comics and uh, the little the little bit I did in high school uh, was pretty much that right uh, just drawing superheroes and stuff like that and then after getting a little bit better and being exposed to photoshop for example uh, back in back in the early 90s everybody was doing colors in, in photoshop right uh, they were uh, using photoshop to do the comic book colors so that was something that exposed me right there and then doing the scientific illustration uh, helped me to you know, sharpen my skills a little bit more because obviously things needed to be more accurate. Things needed to be exact to what I was looking at. It helped me, you know, develop my skills a little bit better. And then I kept on drawing. I had a few stories. I kept on drawing. And uh, after that, I had a few, a few experience with uh, sequential art and comic books. That I think the first one was in Puerto Rico. There was a small company looking for a, a penciler and I applied and uh, I managed to get published by them. It was a company that was called uh, RBA Comics. Uh, I believe they changed their name now to Panico Press. And I did, a, I did a couple of jobs for them. And then after that, I applied to uh, some companies in the States as well. There were a few independent, but I think the most that people can recognize is Xenoscope. I did uh, two stories for them. One was four issues. The other one was five issues. And then I also had an opportunity to uh, get published in the UK by... Uh, there's a, a magazine that compiles uh, different stories. Uh, usually, they are horror stories. And I got published by them. It, they were called Murky Depths. Uh, I believe they still publishing. And that was a great experience. So I, I mean, it's, it's like my, uh, the thing that I do on the side. <laughs> At one point, I really wanted it to, uh, to pursue as a career, but wow, it's, uh, it's, it's tough. Why it, it is tough. Uh, one of the things that I noticed because obviously if I'm, if I'm going to do that, you know, for a living, uh, I need to know that, you know, the money's going to be there and that I'm going to be able to, to count on it. And that's, that wasn't the case. Uh, first of all, I had a contract that I stated that my payment was going to be after they publish. So I did the job. It took me uh, a day per page. So it took me a, around a month to develop uh, one issue. And it wasn't until I was on issue three, probably, that I really was uh, getting paid for, for the first issue. So I, I was given three months <laughs> just to get paid one month. Yeah, and then uh, not only that, um, that company in particular had issues uh, with payments, so I had to chase them down. And so, yeah, it was it was in it was in good uh, it was in a good uh, economical source to pursue uh, at that time. So I had to let it go. Yeah. So AC, you know, a lot of that what you said you you were saying the story or you had some stories published. I'm I'm curious how that works 
are you provided like the storyline and then you come up with the the visuals or is it done in conjunction? So like, is like, it is it scripted or is it more like the Marvel method? Right. Yeah. The ones I worked with was pretty much the Marvel method. We should pretty explain what that is for people probably. Uh, usually for, for a movie or for a story when an illustrator is going to work, uh, usually the script goes and tells you panel one, this is happening. Uh, and this guy has this thing on his hand and he's moving across. It's very detailed. It's very much like a movie script, it's, right? Exactly. So it's very detailed. It's a, uh, uh, pretty much doesn't give you that much of uh, a freeway on, on interpreting things. The Marvel way is totally the opposite. The Marvel way is just establish this is what's going on on this page from beginning to end, and you build the the sequence basically. Yeah, it's uh, plot driven. It gives you basically a breakdown that says on this page this happens. And correct. Then- so in that case, you, you you play more like a director, right? Now now I have a, a little bit more uh, freedom to choose and pick, uh, okay, this is going to be the big, huge panel, or this is going to be, you know, a, a three-panel sequence, or uh, maybe I should do a six-panel sequence because there's a lot of information going on. Uh, in my case, I always, you know, look at the script, see how much of text is going to be printed to be able to distribute that uh really well panel by panel and make sure that the beats are taken care of but yeah but uh, basically the ones that i worked with uh worked around the marble method so it was a lot of fun uh because they especially the the first projects that i took they gave me a lot of liberty in terms of what i could, could do and could you know um pursue not only with the story but also with the the character designs and all that stuff had you previously done any apparel uh, design or anything like that. I know that you were probably working freelance for a multitude of folks, or I assume. Um, I don't know that. I just know the freelance stuff that we worked with together. But I'm just curious, like the transition or correlation between like what you were doing within, you know, print, like comic world, mm-hmm. And now in the apparel world, like what that transition was like and were you like slowly transitioned to that or... Or was it like just, you know, being dropped off in the deep end and right. going, oh, there'd be monsters here? As a graphic designer, I think I touch a few illustrations for, for apparel and at some point, you know, but it wasn't that frequent. It was not uh, the thing that I did constantly. And usually I didn't go as far as to tell them uh, the type of body or, or, or how they, they were going to pursue the, the item. It was just pretty much the graphic, right? Right. When I had that uh, first job uh, with the screen printer and, and embroidery, uh, I did a few illustrations for them and for, for some, of, some of their clients, but it was really uh, very, very simple and very, very minimal. I think it all started later when I, when I moved here, and it was just because I was trying to reach out uh, new things to do and uh, obviously to get more volume and frequency of what I was doing. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's important to grow. Like you, you can't just sit still and not learn new stuff, you know? Well, and, and the thing with me was that uh, uh, a lot of the time that I spent as a freelancer with, with my own company, everything was very corporate. So there was, there was not that excitement <laughs> in pretty much the things that I was doing. Uh, everything was very cold or very, uh, um, restricted. You know, the usage of, the usage of the fonts, the usage of the colors, the usage of, uh, composition and the structures in the designs, it, they were very limited. So, yeah. Well, if corporate, then what you wind up seeing probably is a lot of, you know, like brochure websites, things like that. Oh, so yeah. they're going to be pretty stilted looking. Yeah. Flyers. I mean, every, every, Thing that was uh, there was a junior college that I worked with uh, had a contract with them and yeah that was pretty much it I mean a lot of brochures about a lot of flyers I think the most exciting things that I did for them was that I built the whole marketing that they were going to use uh, for the train station back home and that was really cool because that was a uh, out of the scope of that this corporate or, or uh, ID. Uh, it was more fun. It was uh, uh, had a lot of images going on. It, it was really cool to see the the train with that wrap, you know, on it. Uh, yeah, it was cool. Yeah, so a train wrap—that's pretty dope. You have independently 
participated in some cons and stuff, right? Correct, yes. So you want to tell us about that world? I mean, I've I've never independently, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I've been to cons, but yeah. not. All right, so locally, there's a, in Puerto Rico, there's a, a big one that is called Puerto Rico Comic Con. So that was my one of the first uh, that I attended, of course. I was there as an uh, independent exhibitor and uh, artist. Obviously, being the, the only one in the Caribbean, there's a lot of people uh, coming. Uh, there were uh, a lot of, of the artists that you know here in the States uh, coming as well. And wow, the, the interaction with the fan is great. Uh, the energy that you feel is great. Looking at people reacting to your work. Uh, it, it was really, really uh, a great experience for me. After that, obviously, I, I, I really wanted to do more, right? So uh, one of the next ones I did was in New York Comic Con, but that's uh, another different monster. It's huge. It was, uh, you know, uh, compared to the Puerto Rico Comic Con, it was uh, extremely packed. It was hard to move around. Thank God that, you know, I was there as an exhibitor that I had the opportunity to come in and, and, you know, directly go to my booth and everything. But... Dude, as soon as those doors opened, it was it was amazing. Again, one one great experience. I had the opportunity to chat with uh, different companies, especially uh, you know Marvel, DC, and all that uh, big guys, and take a look at what they really you know how they really do things. Uh, so it was a great experience. And then um, I participated here in, uh, in San Antonio. There's uh, uh, the Alamo City Comic Con, which I participated from. And there's another one in Austin, which is the Greater Austin Comic Con, which I also participated in. And it was cool. So what was your setup? Like, what was that? What all did that entail? Did you just roll with, like, the pole and drape that was provided and, like, a, a table oh, no, and a no. folding chair? No. I, I took some time to build my, my booth, basically. Uh, I took some banners, uh, tall banners uh, that I have retractable. Obviously, for each com- uh, for each con, I, I built it differently, uh, depending on the space that they provided. But yeah, no, I, I built my own thing, and I pretty much focused on uh, my stories. Uh, some some that I that I self published. Uh, so I did that. I was selling my original art. I was uh, doing sketches there. I began with trading cards size. Uh, of sketches and then uh, after that I was taking commissions uh, I was doing them in the in the hotel <laughs> and and you know it, it was it was really cool the, the the experience was really really cool at the beginning uh, you know it's kind of scary right uh but I had fun man it was great it was great I'm curious like what your transition in terms of like the technology that's changed right like Mm -hmm. I'm sure it was originally pencil and then pen and ink. (laughs) And then now you were talking about Photoshop in the 90s and then, yeah, how that's progressed. Okay, so... So you're going to see how old I am. <laughs> All right. So no judgment here, man. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know if you remember, but um, the first, pretty much the first uh, drawing displays that came out were from Wacom back in the day. Uh, they started with the with the huge, uh, I don't know how to call it, a pad that you can work on. Uh, it wasn't a display. It was just a pad, but it was huge. Uh, so I had that one at my job. When they came out with the with the display, I was like, okay, so that's totally changing the game, right? Dude, I remember buying that monitor. Uh, back then, it was uh, 2500 So, And they didn't ship to Puerto Rico. They, they just shipped to the States. So I had to call a friend and say, hey, man, you're going to receive this. Just make sure to send it, send it to me. You know? Yeah, no problem. So to be honest, it took me a while. It took me a while to transition from uh, doing it traditionally on the table and, and doing it on the Cintiq. It, it was because of uh, an issue that came out with one of the comic books that I was working on that I had to really take a dive and say, hey, I, I need to use this. After being like 11 pages in of the first issue, they came back that they want to change it all. And That's rough. It, and it was for tomorrow. Oh, shit. You know? And I was like, dude, you want me to redraw this? Uh, and, and for what this week? And yeah, man, this is it. Oh, we're going to have to pull the plug and blah, blah, blah. And I was, oh my God. So dude, uh, I knew that, you know, doing it digitally, uh, was going to fix a lot of the speed. Right. So I said, Hey, 
I have to jump in. And uh, and it was because of that that I started. And to the point that I, you know, kept on going, kept on going. And all the issues were done uh, on the Cintiq after that. I mean, did you hit your deadline? That's the important oh, yeah, question first. Okay. Oh, yeah, 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 I did. It was horrible. I mean, I, I was up to, I don't know. Because uh, that, that was another thing. I was doing that, but I was also working as a freelancer. So I did my eight hours as a freelancer, and then I jumped into the table and, and, and draw for, for that comic book. So I usually, you know, end up like at 2, 3 a.m. Um, Crazy. Yeah, that's a lot. So, and I was like that for, for what, five months on that, on that same pace? Uh, so the same thing really helped uh, on that. And uh, yeah, ever since, I've, I've been like trying to pursue being more um, my speed. I, I like to look for more speed into my, my work. Like, okay, if I can do this, uh, how, how, how faster can I do it? Um, how, and it's just because of the delivery. Right. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, it's like the true form of illustration and drafting and everything else has just completely changed. And you can't, I mean, the world moves so fast now. Mm -hmm. Um, and we're all so connected and we can get things, you know, sent, received, knocked out, you know, published, right. printed, everything like so fast that it's kind of, you know, it's a necessity. And it it's a little bit sad that like the true form has fallen away a bit. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's still people who yeah. do it, but like for the most part, yeah, it's getting harder and harder to find people who know how to actually, you know, pencil and ink by hand. Well, yeah. Or, and what sucks yeah. about that is that. You don't have the physical artifact after, it's right? It's not an original. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what's nice about it for the artist is they can print as many as they want and sell those, but there's yeah. no actual. But I mean, yeah. there's not like this is the one that the pencil touched. Right. You know what I mean? Like exactly. That uh, that's kind of sad, but the new reality we live in, I I suppose. But yeah, that was you know one of the things that struck me about working with AC in the beginning was the turn time. I was the speed like, is ridiculous. I was blown away how quickly this dude could turn around these illustrations that were just incredible. Like other people you you work with them and it's like, you know, it can be like pulling teeth to get it on time. Yeah. Yeah. Trust me. I oh. I yeah. <laughs> um but yeah, no, AC and you've done great work. And I know I mean obviously you were working um, with like licensed IP to a certain extent with some of these comic endeavors, right? Right. Sure. Yeah. So that that's a good base knowledge, you know, transitioning into like what we're doing, right? Like that. Oh yeah, for sure. I just, yeah, I mean, everything you said is like, it's remarkable because like you honed your skills with the like scientific illustrations which i've always been a fan of i always thought those are so awesome um like understanding anatomy and likeness and all that stuff like it translates it's so weird to think about it but it does translate when you're like okay now i have to make this I, i'm going to redraw this character and make the physical aspects of their face accurate to their likeness um yeah. That's a struggle, you know. Uh, I, it's crazy because, for example, I worked with, with those comics books and everything was cool and dandy, right? Uh, there wasn't that much of a struggle. But things uh, things changed a little bit when I was working with uh, trading cards. So I, it was for expansion uh, for Guardians of the Galaxy. So I worked with uh, Upper Deck with uh, for those. Oh, cool. And I also worked the Predator expansion deck with them uh and it was crazy because there i had to be a little bit more accurate to to what they were giving me there was not much liberty for me to because because <laughs> at the beginning i was like yeah i like that costume but i'm gonna add this <laughs> i'm gonna add this this thing and it looked awesome but they didn't you know they wanted me to to keep the you know the design as it was from there i just you know started to like control myself a little bit and i was like yeah, yeah, yeah i'm sorry <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. Well, who knows? I mean, maybe you inspired them to adjust costumes going <laughs> forward, right? Um, but yeah, I mean, y you know, for us, stepping outside of style guide is so important to differentiate ourselves mm -hmm. in the market and and offer something that. Well, there's no there's no reason for us to sell the same thing you can go down the street and get. Right. You know, just mm -hmm. walk into the store and pick something right. up. 
yeah. based on our brand focus, right? Like right. if we wanted to just sell Marvel, Star Wars, whatever, just for the heck of it, then yeah. But if we want to make a statement and differentiate ourselves and have something that speaks to the fan as a truly unique piece, then that's what we have to do. And What's really cool about that is that what you're creating, AC, obviously everything you create has to go through the approval process that we've painstakingly yes. covered in our previous episodes, I believe. But um, so what that now means is that you have expanded that universe uh, because you created pieces that are now vetted by those IP owners and are now part of that universe, which is something to be super proud of. I mean, these are this is some of the top properties in the on the planet that you're you're creating contents for. So really awesome, you know, dream job for anybody that loves to illustrate or draw or anything. Maybe from the outside, I don't know, AC, if you would call it your dream job, but. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I'm definitely having a blast, uh, especially with, with the properties that we work with. I really have no complaint. <laughs> yeah. I'm having fun and every time is a something new, which I love. But yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> yeah. It's also, I think getting you into an apparel mindset, I think is really cool and probably a bit different than, you know, what your history has been. Just a quick shout out. And if you want to cut this out, you can cut it out. But a quick shout out about one of my favorite pieces that AC has done. And, you know, there's so many illustrations that are incredible that I love. The Nick Cardigan for Godzilla that you did, <laughs> that was an illustration of you um, executing something truly unique and not just a pen and ink form right like right. that i think it's too, difficult yeah it's like you're you're threading a needle yeah yeah it's difficult and it's, it's expanding his knowledge and mm -hmm. like something new and cool and different than um just making a graphic and passing it along for somebody to slap on a t-shirt or whatever we want to get more of that going to ac <laughs> i mean i would say that m my favorite graphics he's produced are things that got slapped on a t-shirt specifically like for <laughs> critical role you knock those out oh. so quick and they were like the word was that they were so happy with it like the li it, it is always great when a licensor is overjoyed at something and just they were over the moon with it, it and it and it's crazy because for those i remember that the, the time that we had was really short mm -hmm. and then we we just pretty much you know just did this brainstorm real quick you know about the concepts that we and it was really present. loose i i didn't tell you i was just like maybe this 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 and you went off and came back with <laughs> and i was like groovy let's yeah. go <laughs> but, but and it's also weird because at the moment i didn't feel that they were uh, as strong as i would love to have them or you know or are, i don't know i it just took me by surprise how how well they they came out uh afterwards uh especially the, the, the Godzilla one as, as well, is kind of hard when you know that your canvas is depending on so many stuff like the, the thread, uh, the, the thread count or how, you know, the color is going to react on the fabric or how. So you never know what you're going to get, I guess, <laughs> in my head. No, that can be a real issue. Like yeah. color management across different reproduction methods and across exactly. different display devices, things like that. Mm -hmm. That gets complicated fast. Oh, yeah. yeah. Because I'm I'm used to the monitor, right? And uh, we uh, for a lot of the projects that I that I manage, usually you you have a certain printers that they send you, you know, their settings. You don't even have to worry about the 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 output of it. Uh, you just made the Acrobat file, and then you know everything's gonna be set for that machine, so everything's taken care of. But here is totally different because we're, we're we're thinking about other items as well, right? How how the ink is being absorbed by this type of fabric or this type of material. So you can even have the same Pantone, I guess, and 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 it won't necessarily be translated the, in the same way. So you have to change the percentage, I'm assuming, of it. But yeah, it it, it was great. It was a great experience. Uh, I really have a blast. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Nice. Yeah, and so P.S. Uh, to everybody out there, AC would like to challenge anybody to a coffee drinking challenge. Oh, he'll win. <laughs> AC, I think AC bleeds bleeds coffee, so he yeah. Oh yeah. He, he goes hard. I know he's always brewing another pot. So yeah, yeah. I used to think I drank a lot of coffee. Yeah, 
Yeah, uh, that's something that I might I might need to <laughs> to change in the in the future. But but yeah, so far that's that's how I roll, man. Yeah, don't <laughs> let it slow you down, dude. I I have known someone that drank more than you, but okay. yeah, it was an old roommate of mine. Back but they then. died. Ah, uh, <laughs> no. I mean, would, anyway, he would brew a whole pot of coffee right before bed, put it in the fridge so he could have it first thing in the morning, Ooh. and then drink coffee all day long. And the coffee in the fridge was so he could get up and function in the morning. And I'm like... To make his coffee. Paul, have you thought about cutting back on coffee? Maybe that's why you're having trouble sleeping? And he's like, oh, I can't. If I don't have my coffee, I can't function. I'm like, Paul, <laughs> is the coffee the problem? Right. What? No, it's okay. Fine. Cool. But you know what? It's weird. Because during the weekend, I'm not like that. It's just it's just when I'm working. Like, I got used to having this cup of, you know, full uh, while I'm working at the computer or drawing or I need that. You it's know, like focus. Kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's like an exercise that I have to do, you know, after a stroke, give me a sip. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, if I erase, let me get another sit. Yeah. <laughs> so it's part of the part of the the routine and the I don't know the technique that I use. It. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm sorry. One more. Didn't you do an illustration for El Ray Network once? Oh yeah. So okay. So during my uh, the time that I was doing uh, comic books here in, in the states, a friend of mine was hired for working with the marketing of Lucha Underground. So he reached out to me because they had this idea of doing comics about the wrestlers and about, you know, uh, in particular, Rey Re Mysterio, uh, which was really popular back then. Uh, still is, I guess. So he reached out. He said, hey, I'm not sure if you're available. And I know that you uh, are not <laughs> so cool with comics and, uh, at this point, but uh, would you be willing to to work with us on this and i was like yeah man heck yeah uh so uh i submitted my work el rey network was going to evaluate you know all the artists that were presenting and all that stuff so they hit me back and they say hey we want to go with you uh, but there are going to be a lot of uh comic books made so uh what we're going to do is we're going to take more than one artist but you'll be the one that will do all the covers and you'll be the one in charge of Rey Mysterio issue. And I was like, oh, shoot. Okay, cool. So, uh, so yeah, I did, I did that job. I, it, it was so cool, man. It was so cool. The, the gimmick was that they were going to do those comic books when they premiered the show. So people who went to the show, uh, received one, one of those issues. So they were very limited. The only way to get it free, I think it was online, like a, in digital form. So, so yeah, that was cool. That was cool. That's awesome. Cool, man. Thank you, AC. Thank you, Greg. For all you guys out there, I know a lot of you have our exclusives. You've seen us at the shows. Um, you, you see a lot of the great, you know, exclusive graphics that we show up with and, uh, just know that AC is uh, drinking coffee and, and working on more uh, right now for you. So thank you all for, for joining us again uh, for another episode of Content Pending. Uh, be sure to check out the website, uh, heroesvillains.com, and check us out on social at Heroes Villains Brand. And we'll see you next time. Thank you much. Bye.